Hey, Mike, can you come in? What you need, babe? We need to do something about this light in here. What light? That light. It's not bright enough. We just paid 150 bucks to put that light up there. Do you want me to change it? Maybe put some brighter light bulbs in. That's a good idea. I'm going to check that out. So I did check it out. And remember, my goal is to find lighting that is much brighter than what we have in her room now. And first, I looked at regular fluorescent tubes, hoping I could find some that were much brighter than the others. And I totally struck out. Uh, next, we looked at LED uh, direct replacement or plug and plays, as they're called. And those are good because you can just put them in your fixture, flip on the light, and they work. No rewiring or anything necessary. Here again, the problem was I couldn't find any bright enough. <laughs> now, I did find these online. This is a different type. And you'll notice they have three strips of lights. Now, what I found locally all have one strip of light, and they were rated about 2,000 lumens, which is what you would consider a standard fluorescent tube. So that's not going to help us. They won't be bright enough. At 4,680 lumens, these are over twice as bright as normal fluorescent tubes. So when we put these in and put the switch on, <laughs> they were to knock her socks off. <laughs> but in fairness to her, she does have vision problems and she has problems with dimly lit areas. So I really want to accommodate her and give her a really bright uh, work area. Now there is a problem with these lights. Now these are not direct replacement. These are called ballast bypass. They are also called double powered. Now, if that was total Greek to you, <laughs> let me explain. Now, this is your ballast right here. And this is the part that we're going to have to bypass. And we're going to have to wire around this and it'll have to be isolated or we'll just take it out of the fixture. We won't need it anymore. Now, why do we have it anyway? Well, fluorescent tubes are filled with gas and that gas has to glow to make light. And that doesn't happen in household current. The ballast somehow conditions the electricity to make that process happen. But now that the ballast is in there, the LED tubes won't work because the LED tubes work on household current. So once they're removed, this will be just a standard 110, 120 volt fixture. So what did I mean by double powered? Well, double powered means that each end of your LED tube has to be powered or have electricity to it. Now you can have a hot end or the black wire end and the white wire end or your neutral, or you can switch them and have white on this end and black on this end. It really doesn't matter. Now what that means is that each end of our fixture, these sockets or tombstones as they're called, have to be powered. So I'm gonna make this end my neutral end. Both of these will be tied to the white wire. This is going to be my hot end. And this is going to be attached to the black wire. Now in this video, we're going to demonstrate how to install the bulbs we just talked about, the ballast bypass uh, double power tubes. There's also a single power tube, and we're not going to demonstrate that. Those are much less common, and it's a different wiring strategy. Which brings up a point. We've talked about several types of tubes here. You need to know that these tubes are not interchangeable. So you really need to know what you're buying. Well, how do you know that? Well, on the end of the tube, it'll tell you that information. Notice these say uh, double power. They also say ballast bypass. And they also tell you it's a T8 bulb. That should be on the box if you buy them in the store. Or if you buy them online, they should disclose that information. So now I think we can move ahead and let's go ahead and get these babies installed in our fixture. Now for our demonstration, I'm going to use a shop light since I'm relamping my shop as well. Now first, disconnect power and do that at your breaker unless you have a wall plug like I do. After disconnecting power, we can go ahead and remove our bulbs and dismantle the fixture. I'm using this fixture because the fixture in her sewing room is in a very high ceiling, very hard to get it down and get it back up there. So I'm going to rewire it in place. You have to remove this protective cover to get to the ballast and the wiring. This fixture has a pull chain switch, which we can just disconnect it from the cover and leave it in place. Now you will have a white wire, a black wire, and probably a bare copper or green colored ground wire 
entering your fixture from your power source. Now, I've got white wires coming in because I've got a white cord. But notice that I've got black wire on the ballast that's attached to one of the white wires. The white wire is attached to another. Also, there's a third wire. The middle wire is a ground wire, and it's attached here on the wall of the fixture. And there's also a green wire that goes over to the ballast. Now, they just painted that, but green usually denotes uh, ground. Now, what we're going to do here, I, I know you look at all of these wires, and this looks confusing and scary, but it's not. We're just going to cut these wires, attach these wires to the white wire. I'm going to cut the black wire and the white wire loose here, and we'll attach these wires to the black wire. And that will power our sockets hot on this end, neutral on this end. Now, you'll notice these have two wires to each socket. Yours may only have one. It really doesn't matter because when we do this conversion, uh, this whole thing is going to be common. This will be hot. It doesn't matter if there were 20 wires. It would still be the same electrically. And I'm not going to cut them too short because I may want to hook this back up later. So we'll pop these off. So we want to remove the ground wire attached to the ballast and just move it out of the way. But I want to keep the incoming green wire attached to the fixture. So I'm just going to re-secure it uh, with the nut. Now we also have the switch which is connected in line with the black wire. And we want to make sure we cut that black wire between the switch and the ballast. So we won't lose our switch. Now I'm going to cut all of the wires on this end of the fixture. And I'm going to cut them maybe three or four inches from the end of the ballast. Now I'm going to remove the ballast uh, and I'm going to set it aside and probably store that till later in case I need it. And we also want to put that nut back in just in case you need that later also. So I'm going to take my white cord and combine it with these but I'm going to need an extension. So this is just a piece of extension cord but this will work. When adding a jumper wire like this, I want to make sure that I use the same size and diameter of wire that's in the fixture. I also want to use the same color if I can, you know, black or white, uh, just to avoid confusion. So I strip the ends of the jumper and my white common wire, and then I twist them together, then screw on an orange wire nut so that we make a good tight connection. And these wire nuts come in a variety of sizes and they're color coded by size. The other end of the jumper wire we're going to attach to these four wires we just cut on the other end of the fixture. But first we're going to need to strip those back and bare the ends. Before we try to attach them to our jumper wire, we're going to cut it back to a more appropriate length. Now of course we bare the end of our jumper wire and we're going to bundle it with the other four wires we just cut and we're going to twist these all together. Now this can be difficult with so many wires. Uh, so I'm going to use my electrician's pliers for some help. And this time we're going to use a larger yellow wire nut. And again we want to make sure we get it tight and snug and so we'll have a good connection. Now we're going to repeat the procedure on the other end of the fixture which will be the hot end of our fixture. And we're going to strip and bare the four colored wires and the black wire, attach them together, and we'll use another yellow wire nut to put them together and secure it. So now we have both ends, hot and common, wired up correctly so we can reassemble our fixture. For safety reasons, I don't want to insert a bulb now and test it until I've got the cover back in place and covering all the exposed wiring. And since I'm fairly confident of the results, I'm going to go ahead and reattach everything permanently, and then we'll test our bulbs. Well, the moment of truth has come, so we can go ahead and install our two LED bulbs. Now we want to make sure that the strips face into the room, not to the top of the fixture. And just a heads up, these bulbs get really hotter, much hotter than fluorescents, so be careful. Okay, let's see what we got. Put my plug. Just 
extension cord. Whoa! What do you think about that? Okay, I'm going to go hang it now. And here it is on my ceiling. I've got one down and five more shop lights to go. <laughs> so now we'll go inside and wire up that sewing room light. And honestly, this fixture was easier to wire than the shop light. You would think that with twice as many tubes, it would be twice as hard, but it wasn't. Uh, that's because for this fixture, there was only one wire for each tombstone, and the ground wire is attached to the fixture, but not to the ballast, so we didn't have to tamper with that. Also, it was easy to separate our wiring because they used standard wire nuts to attach everything. So this made it a snap. That done, I went ahead and removed the ballast from the fixture. And I'm going to store it for later also. Okay. I attached the black wire to the row of tombstones that will be on the right side of your screen. And this was really easy since they had already been stripped. All I had to do was just twist them together and attach the wire nut. Next, I attached a jumper to the white wire and fitted it to the row of sockets on the left of your screen. Now, the only problem I had here was that the little tombstones kept popping out of their mounting holes. And, of course, they would just pop right back in, but it was a little awkward. But I finally got it all done. I got my wire nuts attached, and now we're ready to try out our LED tubes. Now, if you put all your lights in and you have one or two that don't work, don't automatically assume that you've wired it wrong. This happened to us actually out of eight bulbs we had two that didn't work. Also I'm going to use some cable ties to secure all this loose wiring once we have a successful test. Okay let's turn the light on. Whoa! Oh! That's bright! Whoa! <laughs> what do you think of that? Great! <laughs> well honey what do you think? Are they bright enough? Oh they're great! But do you think you could just dim them a little bit? Oh, no, just. There's that word I hate. Well, uh, no, they're not dimmable. You can't use a dimmer switch with them. Seriously, are they, are they that bright? They're wonderful. <laughs> oh, great. I made her happy, folks. And so we have another successful project. Now, folks, you may have noticed that I did not include merchandising information for the light bulbs we bought. And that's because out of eight bulbs, we had two defective. It may just be a fluke, but I would hate for you to buy them and it happened to you. You can get these lights or similar on walmart.com, amazon.com, and other places. Now, be sure to send me your comments and suggestions, and I will get back to you. Also, don't forget to go below and like and subscribe wait, to our... Wait a minute. What? That sign's in front of my face. Oh, let me get that. Is that Thank better? You. Much better. Okay, thank you. Anyway, don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, thanks for watching.